Stardust Memories is the ninth film written and directed by Woody Allen. It was the first film of his that the critics mauled, thinking it was an attack on them. But over the years, it has been accepted as one of Allen's best. But how well do you know it? Well, here's 10 things about Stardust Memories. I, I, uh, I, as a matter of fact, if I did identify with a Greek mythological character, it would not be Narcissus. Who would it be? Zeus. <laughs> The film is more than a little nod to Federico Fellini's Eight and a Half, another film about a director reflecting on his life. Alan's working title for this film was Four, a typically self-effacing comment about how he wasn't even half the director that Fellini was. There have been many interpretations of this film, but Alan maintains that most of it is a dream. In fact, everything from the dead rabbit onwards is not real. Or is it? Dream or not, the idea of a weekend film retrospective was based on real weekends held by Judith Christ. Christ was a film critic and actually appears in this film in her only screen role. I've never seen anything like it. Born magician. The fictional Stardust Hotel was actually the Ocean Grove Auditorium in Ocean Grove, around an hour south of Manhattan. Alan's gift to the venue was a large cross that is still lit every night. There is some great cameos in this film. The most famous is no doubt Sharon Stone. It was her first ever film role and she did her best, as she says, to melt that sucker. She never worked again with Alan on one of his films, but she has co-starred in three films in which Alan acted. Also appearing before they were famous, two Star Trek actors, Brent Spiner from The Next Generation and Armin Shimmerman from Deep Space Nine. Shallow, it's shallow. You don't see the shallow? shallow? Yeah. Did you see the shallow girl that I'm with? No, I haven't. Met Playboy Center for Oh, her. perfect, perfect. You met her in a hot tub, right? She's a lovely right? girl. Yeah, she's very healthy. At one point, Tony Roberts' character mentions that he should be dating Playboy models. It's a line that is paid off in another cameo. The film ends with him, with Candy Loving, a real Playboy playmate. One of the more surreal parts of the film was the way the wall decorations changed depending on the scene. The provocative photos reflected Sandy's mind with images from the Vietnam War to Groucho Marx. The film's title comes from the song Stardust, written by Hoagie Carmichael. There have been many, many versions of this song, but Alan used the one by Louis Armstrong and his orchestra, recorded in 1931. Look, here's my point. If nothing lasts, why am I bothering to, to make films or do anything for that matter? We enjoy your films, particularly the early funny ones. Finally, the joke about Woody Allen's early funny ones comes from this film. It was a throwaway line, but it has stuck as a phrase to describe Allen's own film career. Allen apparently doesn't like the term at all. Incidentally, you're also not Superman, you're a comedian. You want to do mankind a real service? Tell funnier jokes. And that's 10 things about Stardust Memories. Find out much more about this film in our book, The Woody Allen Pages, The Watcher's Guide, Volume 2. Out now on Kindle and iBooks. And go to WoodyAllenPages.com for more Woody Allen news 
and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos. Sandy, this is an Easter film. We don't need a movie by an atheist. To, more, to you, I'm an atheist. To God, I'm the loyal opposition. <laughs> Yeah.